He was our original benefactor, obviously. So we'd love to get the history of the place sorted out properly. So any information on that would be great to be seen. Yes, thank you. Um, our classes are based. Uh, we've got ten classes basically. Um, two early years, two key stage one, one key stage two, two three, one four to further education and we have an autistic base as well. Um, so we take children from 2 to 19 years old. Um, and that means that we really get to know kids really well and families really well. Um, and that really does give the place um, an atmosphere, a family atmosphere. Um, staff tend to stay, so they are very committed people. Governors can't escape. Um, and I've been there 15 years, 16 years, so, and I think history is really important and, and to a feeling of a place where people feel they belong and it's the place where the children own it. and assistants, 33 teaching assistants, four cleaners, one school keeper, 25 midday assistants, a lot of our children need a lot of help to be fed, two cooks, five admin and staff, they're not all full time, most of them are part time, volunteers, students, and 90 kids aged 2 to 19. Uh, we're also supported by health, who provide us with additional staff. So we have three nursing staff, not always on site at the same time, but some of our children have a lot of medical need, uh, quite a lot of tube-fed children, epileptic, and the nurses are there to support children as needed. Two days of speech therapy. I put planned after it, because that's what we should get. I haven't had it for quite a while. That's a health issue. Um, two days of physiotherapy, again planned. Two days of occupational therapy. <coughs> and wheelchair clinics. And the community paediatrician attends the school and um, sees children <coughs> there. And the occupational therapy is really important because a lot of our children do have physical disability and they need to be um, maintained in a good position in seating and also moved and um, kept fit and healthy. Here's the children. Um, we really work primarily on, we do the national curriculum, all schools have to, but we, we change everything to fit the needs of our children. So uh, most of our emphasis is on communication and social education and independence because those are the skills that are important in life. And I think they're the skills that are important in life for everyone, not just disabled children. The academic is obviously important, but if you don't have those strong social skills and know how to get on with people and know how to be independent in life, um, then you're not going to be successful anyway. Um, so we work on teamwork. Uh, we try and get children to work together and cooperate. This is a lovely game. It's a, a parachute thing, and they've got to work together to make the ball go all over the place. It's great fun. Actually, that parachute was up in the class the other day as a teepee, and they had all the children sitting around being Indians with a little fire, artificial fire in the middle, so not on purpose. We also have great fun. When everybody else closes for snow, we think, yay, yeah, great, snowman competition. Um, art is really important for the youngsters. Um, a lot of them don't have very much communication. Um, so it's really important that we try and find other ways for them to communicate and, and arts and music are a way that they can show what they're feeling and thinking. Um, we use a lot of signing and symbols um, in order to help the youngsters communicate. That's another art. A lot of the children need a lot of help. Um, and if you're watching a session with a, a child like this, 
very often it looks as if the member of staff is doing it, and that, that's the skill of the staff, really, because what they're looking for is gentle movements towards and a child indicating, and then they will extend that indication to support the child to do what they want. We do an awful lot of choice making. So if there's an art session, the child will be shown two different colours. And then they might point or gesture or eye point to the colour that they want to use. Um, they might be given different textures and then they will eye point and choose which one they want to use and then be supported to do that. So the, the piece of work at the end, although they've had an incredible amount of work of support to create it, they've chosen the colour, the shape, the textures and just how they wanted it to be developed. We use a lot of um, ICT equipment, um, technical stuff. This is actually an Opta music. Um, anyone into Michel Jarre years ago when he had that lovely uh, light organ mm. and he sort of played it by putting his hands in? That's what our Opta music is. You get beams of light down and you put a, snow, a smoke machine on it and the youngsters break the beams to make the music play. Well, some of them aren't into music, some of them prefer the body sounds or the sirens or the animal sounds. So you find out what sound the child is motivated by, you plug it into the opera music and off they go. Um, and even the most disabled child can do that. You can put the <coughs> onto their elbows so they just have to do that or move their head. Um, and the more able ones can dance through it. Um, so, fantastic piece of equipment. We've got a number of uh, sensory rooms, and we've also got sensory equipment um, in classes. In fact, Jerry and Jeff helped develop a sensory room for our early years, so that it's just always there in the corner of the room available for use. Um, tactile is really important. This is a massage um, session. And if you consider that these children are very isolated or can be very isolated, they can't reach out to others, um, they're dependent on people coming to them. And so for some, they're, when they're dealt with it's because they need toileting or they need fading or they need changing. And so it's really important to build in tactile experiences which are social. So touch isn't always about functional things. It's also about pleasure and enjoyment and having contact with other human beings in a different kind of a way. So um, that's what we try and build into their programs. We also uh, extend the activity out, uh, use a lot of community stuff. Um, this is riding for the disabled. And they do actually go out into the woods. I don't know how many of you here ride horses. It's quite a terrifying experience. They're high things and they've got teeth and they bite and they've got big feet that you've got to avoid. Um, and actually we were Ofsteaded yesterday and the Ofsted inspector had a tea party with some of the older children and asked them what they liked. And one of the kids said he liked riding. She said, oh, you ride a horse? And he said, oh, of course. Don't you? No, I don't. So again, it's something that they can do well. Some of them can swim better than I can. A lot of them can ride a horse better than I can. It's finding out what they can do and building up their self-esteem and sense of pride in what they can do as individuals. A lot of what we do has to be adapted. So this is an example of how we adapt bowling. Um, we've got lots of drain pipes around the place, so we can use those in the same way. We've just taken delivery of uh, adapted table tennis tables and they've got sort of walls down the side and they haven't got um, a net across the middle. And the bats aren't round, they're sort of that shape, so all you've got to do is push it backwards and forwards. Even I can play, it's fantastic. Um, so lots of things are adapted to enable our kids to take part. We've got our own swimming pool, um, which is like a warm bar. So, um, that's a fantastic resource. For a youngster who is stuck in a wheelchair, um, it loosens up all those muscles and they've got freedom of movement in a way that they don't ever have anywhere else. Um, and so we try and get youngsters into the swimming pool as often as we can. Uh, PE is also about cooperation and <coughs> working together. We do a lot of social skills, so it's obviously cookery. 
That's a favourite. And I have to say, we have a lot of snack times through the day as well. It's very motivating to work the snack time. We try and do the healthy eating, but there are packets of crisps around as well as the apples. They go shopping for their meals. Um, on Monday, this group uh, cooked. They, did, they bought bread, actually. They didn't cook their own bread, but they bought bread and made soup. And then they sell the soup in the school. And then that's their fundraising activity. I can't remember what they're raising funds <coughs> for at the moment, but they bought chickens and goats and things for other people. Um, again, this is information, oh, it's uh, technology. The little yellow button is enabling a child to use the liquidizer. So even he can take part and have a go with things. This is the same sort of button, but it's being used to enable this child to use a, a screen and to access a computer. Whereas a keyboard is quite confusing and too difficult, she can do it with a single switch. Some of our children are more able and they can copy onto a keyboard. So it's a matter of making sure that every child um, is maximised really in every aspect. Mm -hmm. And we also do the old paper and pen stuff because you can't beat the old style stuff either, can you? Technology doesn't do it all. In maths, we do an awful lot of graphs and basic counting. Uh, and we use the old blocks as well. It's another big session. And also practical maths, using money. They don't actually often understand that a pound is 100 pence, but they know what it can buy, and that they've got to wait for change. It's a bit awkward when something's exactly a pound because they just stand there waiting for it. This is science, how things move. They're doing an experiment on the angle of the ramp and how quickly it goes down. Oops. <coughs> That's gardening. We did quite a lot of gardening. We have a grounds week, so there's quite a lot of gardening in grounds week. Um, but this activity knocks a bit of science on the head because it's life and living processes. But actually what they're doing is experiencing things growing and looking after things and taking responsibility for it for us because otherwise it dies. <coughs> this sort of counts in for work experiences, that kind of responsibility. Uh, this is more straight science thinking and floating and experimenting. Um, the symbols behind are very often marketing symbols. Child might not be able to read the word, but they know the symbol for float or sink. So it enables them to use writing and reading at a much more basic level before they can get to actually reading the written word. We do a lot of um, culture. Culture is great fun. Um, we've had to restrict the number of celebrations we have because what we were doing was having a celebration. If you go into religion, there's always a celebration, isn't there? And, and that always then has a nice festival with it, with different foods and different smells and proper songs and different music. Um, so we have a great time with all that. Um, we did Wassailing New Year um, last week, which was great fun. You beat up trees and you um, bless the land. and So I think it's just great because you flick water over everybody. <laughs> Any excuse for a bit of something sensory and different. Um, people who help us. This is Denise. Um, Denise was a parent of a child who's now left. I think she left four years ago. Um, and Denise has run the PTA, basically. Uh, she's the treasurer. Anyone who knows their treasurer or secretary, they're the ones who run it, really, aren't they? Uh, and she's maintained the PTA through thick and thin. Um, we've got a back to that, Jerry, but there are people who are with the school uh, for a long time. She also has volunteered um, and been in the swimming pool every week, not with her daughter, with other people's children. Um, she's also uh, works for us now, she does two days a week on admin, and as a member of staff she's invaluable because she's been there. And if a parent is having trouble with benefits or looking at post-school provision or whatever, then she is invaluable because she's the one they can go and talk to. She knows what it's like. We have lots of people into school. There's a police officer with a dog, which was great fun. 
So we either have people in or we do a lot of trips out. Um, Ford Motor Company, they come in, they have a scheme where everyone has to do voluntary work for either three or five days a year. And the batch of them come to us every um, summer. Um, and they do <coughs> this pond for us. They've done bits of gardening and bits of painting. This is what the PTA have done for us. Um, the PTA raise funds constantly and they uh, refurbish the sensory rooms, actually interactive. Um, so children press the buttons, the cow moves and things like that. This is our music therapy room. Unfortunately, we've lost therapy funding, but we use it as a music room still, and that's great fun. We've got all sorts of instruments in there. We've also um, had this canopy. Which gives us an outdoor playground. It's got astroturf underneath, so you can use it all year round. And again, it gives another experience <coughs> for youngsters to be taught outside instead of always in the same place. Am I doing the time, Joe? I know people have to go, right? Uh, these are the outdoor musical instruments. Um, this is the swimming pool, and again, Ford Company painted that wonderful frieze on the back, which makes it much more exciting. Um, Adapted playground equipment with the roundabout that wheelchairs can use. Um, again, different kinds of uh, equipment. And this is our sensory garden that was really done a few years ago. This is our new school bus, which was uh, given us by Forex. Thank you very much, those who are here. And again, it's got the tail lift, so it's adapted for everybody in school to use. And it's used all the time. <laughs> Uh, latest project led by Jerry and Jeff. Um, they've refurbished early years for us, uh, which was looking very drab and tatty, and they painted it all up. Um, this was the old toilet, and that's what they've done to it. Again, horrible old tatty toilet, and now it's all beautifully refurbished. It's a pleasure to be in now, <laughs> most of the time. So what do we do with all this? We share it with Crossroads. Crossroads are an organisation, a charity organisation, um, who are funded by social care and they come in and help families out at home. But they also run clubs. They, they have the school on Saturday, they have the run of the place, which is quite a horror when footballs are being kicked down corridors, I have to bite my tongue. But mm -hmm. it's a wonderful place for them to come and use with all our facilities. They do that on a Saturday and on a Tuesday and Thursday evening. Um, we also share the place with FIG, Family Information Group, who serve a wider audience of disabled children in Haybury, not just our kids, which in Crossroads as well. And they run a summer school for four weeks during holidays. And again, they use the place as it was their own. So um, we have to tidy up our schools. Rags is the Romford Autistic Support Group. It used to be the Ravensbourne Autistic Support Group, but they've broadened this, their uh, spectrum now. And they're trying to support families with autistic children through the whole of Havery. They have a Monday club at ours, and they also run a, a holiday scheme. Uh, Portage, which is a preschool group, come in and use our pool on a Friday morning with the little <coughs> kids um, to give them a therapy pool. Uh, we have holiday swimming, and we run our own group uh, for children with medical and physical needs who really can't go anywhere else because they need a nurse on site. Run that every holiday apart from Christmas. They stay at home for Christmas. So, what do we still need? We need to refurbish the hall and orange class. As I said, it was an old building and it still needs a lot of work doing to it. We're um, trying to raise funding for special status in communication and interaction. They're our main focuses. The government runs a scheme where if you fit the criteria, and you raise £20,000, they will then give you £100,000 back to provide uh, specialist services in a given area. We're looking at communication and interaction, which you then share, and then we would be supporting families and other schools with children with the same kind of need. So that's going to be a major push next year. We desperately need a homeschool worker to give families more support to carry out um, their educational programmes at home. We would love to get music therapy in again. And we need more helpers and supporters. 
So if you're good with a paintbrush, Jerry and Jeff are the ones to talk to. And thank you very much for listening and for inviting me here. I hope that was good enough. <laughs>